guys, this is going to be my um, <clears throat> one week postpartum. Um, I haven't had a chance to do it earlier because it's been pretty stressful and busy. Um, anyways, what happened is Wednesday the 3rd, February 3rd, the day before I was supposed to be induced at 7.30 in the morning, or no, I was supposed to be induced the 5th, that's right. February 4th is when I ended up having him, which was the day I was supposed to be induced, the day before. Um, so anyways, February 3rd, I went to bed, um, having some pretty bad back pain and, um, cramping, but I had been having back pain, so I didn't really think anything of it. Went to sleep, um, got maybe an hour of sleep, got out of bed the next morning, and was having insanely bad pain, like, it was just pains everywhere and there was no break so I didn't think I was having contractions because there was no break in between it was just like a constant pain finally after about five hours of being up and dealing with that and screaming at my dad and Matt because I was so hurting um, I ended up going to the hospital got to the hospital and I was four centimeters dilated 100% effaced um, and I was having contractions pretty much constantly. There was maybe 10 seconds in between them. So they were they were pretty consistent. That's why I was in so much pain. Um, but I didn't want to have an epidural. So I waited four hours there having still constant pain. I was dealing with it pretty well. The nurses were like, I can't believe you don't want anything. You're having almost a constant contraction. I don't know how you're dealing with it. But um, after four hours... She checked me again, um, and I was still the same. No change at all. So then, at that point, I was getting really frustrated because I had been in pain for almost 24 hours now because I had started having the pain Wednesday night. So, um, I think it was around, let's see, we got to the hospital at 4. It must have been around 9 or 10, maybe even 8. They broke my water. Um... After they broke my water, the first contraction I had, I couldn't take it anymore. That was even worse. Like, that made them even stronger. They were already really strong and really close together. But that made it a hundred times worse. So, I went through about five or six contractions, which only were, you know, that was only ten minutes because they were so close together. Um, and I was begging for that epidural. So, um, she went and got the anesthesiologist, and about 20 minutes later she showed up. Which, you have no concept of time when you're there, because it did not seem like 20 minutes, it seemed like 2 seconds, because my contractions were so close together, it seemed like it was really quick that she was there. So, um, she came in, and she explained what they were going to do, and yada yada yada. And, um, she started to do the procedure, and the nurse was pushing the bed, because the bed was rolling, it wasn't locked while she was putting the needle in my back. So I started freaking out because I thought that she was going to end up paralyzing me or something. And I told her that um, it felt like it was in only one side. Like I felt like the needle was only in one side. I could feel it in one side. Um, she said, no, just just relax. It takes about 15 minutes to work. Blah, 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 blah. So they started the medicine and not even five minutes later, my whole right side was completely numb. My left side was still hurting. I said to the anesthesiologist, I can still feel everything on my left side really bad. She said, you need to relax. It, should, it takes longer than five minutes, blah, 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 blah. Well, half an hour later, I'm still feeling pain on my left side. So there was nothing they could do unless they redid it, and I didn't want to do it again. She obviously didn't know what she was doing, so because she didn't even have me sign a consent form until after the procedure. So that could have been her job there if I hadn't signed it, because... She had already done it. I didn't have to sign it. Um, but, anyways, so after that, it was a little bit easier. Um, I mean, it's it's a lot easier to only feel it 50% instead of 100% because I only felt it on that one side. And um, mostly I was having back labor, so it was even worse than I would imagine because um, they said that usually back labor is more painful. So... After about an hour um, they, of having the epidural, um, they came back in, 
They wanted to start me on Pitocin, but I said no. I don't want to do Pitocin because I was having regular contractions already that were so close together. But since I wasn't dilating anymore, they wanted to do it. But she came back in after only an hour of having that epidural done. And I was 9 centimeters. And she said almost 10. So she said whenever I felt the urge to push to just let her know. And um, she stayed in there the whole time, which is weird because the whole maternity ward was full. Every other time I've gone there in false labor, it's been empty. But the time I actually go there, it's full. So um, she stayed in there with me the whole time. And usually the doctors only come in when you are about to push. Um, so I was really happy that I had her because at my office, there's four different doctors that you could potentially have. And I was really glad I had her. Um, but anyways, so um, about 15 minutes after that, I was 10 centimeters Still wasn't feeling the urge to push, and I wanted to wait until I felt it, because I didn't want to be pushing when he wasn't down far enough. So, um, I started to feel it a little bit, so we decided to start pushing. And, um, I ended up pushing for almost two hours. Had him at 11.55 p.m. on February 4th. And he weighed 7 pounds, 11 and a half ounces. 20 inches long. And, um, his umbilical cord was 5 and a half feet long. And it wasn't even wrapped around him once. So we got really lucky with that. She said she hasn't seen the cord that long ever. She actually even pulled out a measuring tape to measure it and took pictures and everything because she, she said it was so long. Um, I'll see about maybe putting up a picture um, in my next video. Not in this one because I'm not going to have time. Um, but after that, um, I, she said I could try breastfeeding. I didn't even have to do anything. He latched on on his own perfect. The lactation consultant said she'd never seen a newborn baby do that without having some sort of coaching because I didn't even touch him. He just latched right on. And um, so he did really good with that. Um, that night, I didn't sleep at all because I was really worried about him. Like, I just was really paranoid. I'm a very paranoid person. I was paranoid he was going to stop breathing or something. So I just sat there holding him all night. Um, didn't sleep the next day really either. And then the next day we went home. Um, I had my dad watch him for a little while so that I could get a little bit of sleep. But since I was breastfeeding, it wasn't much because he wanted to eat. Um, this, the week went by really fast, but it was very hard. Because it's all on me when I'm breastfeeding. Nobody else can feed him. Nobody else can, you know, calm him down. It's all me, so... That was pretty stressful, but I'm really glad that I'm sticking with it because I think that's the best for him. Um, anyways, I'm not going to be able to show my belly because I'm holding him right now. He's been up screaming. Yesterday, he woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning and screamed from 4 o'clock in the morning until 5 at night. Finally, I called the doctor because he was eating fine. He was, was having messy diapers and everything. Um, didn't have a fever. He was just screaming. Um... And the lactation consultant said he was probably going through a growth spurt, but I was still worried. So I called the doctor, they got us in, and um, he checked him out and said that he thought he had a brain tumor because of the way he, he always kind of like flutters his eyes down and looks cross-eyed and stuff. Um, so we rushed over to the hospital and he had a CT scan. We waited there, he was screaming the whole time we were there. Um, finally, they came out with the results and they said... He didn't have a brain tumor, um, but I have to go back today, actually, and um, get another checkup just to make sure everything's okay. Um, so he finally is sleeping, and that's all good. But he already, he's only, after five days, he had his first appointment, and he was only one pound under his birth weight. And for being breastfed, that's really, really good, according to the doctor. So um, when he went yesterday to the doctor's, he was 11 days, and he weighed 8 pounds, so he had gained 7 ounces in, like, 5 days, 6 days, so he did really good, he's doing really good, he's a big boy, um, I can't show you my belly like I said, but I will do that in my next video, um, I'm gonna show you him, the lighting is really bad, so I don't know if you'll be able to see him very well, but I'm gonna try, and then I will talk to you guys next week, okay?